It'll reach if uh, someone's standing right over there. You're good. You're good. Still good. You're not good. Okay. Well, now you're good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so my name is Vanessa Corsetti, and I will be representing Hugh Hefner um, in this employment agreement. My name is Tark Bilad, and I'll be representing Icon Merger uh, in this employment agreement. Um, just to give you all some context, if you don't know who Hugh Hefner is, um, he's known as a legend, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to my partner and I anyways. Um, he, he has also received a lot of scrutiny through the years, um, a, a lot from women publicly who have lived in the Playboy Mansion um, or who have been one of the lucky 40 women to be his girlfriend or wife. Um, this, agree this employment agreement um, is based off of the uh, Playboy Enterprise, which is an incorporation that was formed to manage and operate the Playboy magazine and media and licensing that goes along with Playboy as a brand. Playboy, the Playboy magazine was created in the 50s by Hugh Hefner. He was a journalist and he was well known for uh, he was well known for uh, his freedom of expression and also being um, having the freedom to express sexuality. And so the Playboy magazine ultimately is centerfolds of nude uh, women models known as Playboy Bunnies. Oh, and just, sorry, fun fact, the first nude photo that really got Hugh Hefner famous was um, Marilyn Monroe, and so that was really what sparked and got him really famous. He was able to sell hundreds of thousands of copies, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. So the, um, as you can see from the recitals, uh, the bold part is that this is an employment agreement, and you'll see throughout the employment agreement, there's mention of a merger agreement, a operative agreement, and a licensing agreement. All separate to this agreement, but as a whole, they comprise one agreement. So this employment agreement starts and only becomes effective with the merger. Um, basically, the a Playboy started off as a private company in the 50s, and then uh, Hugh Hefner took it public, and then whenever his, whenever the Playboy business started to not do so well due to the internet and a lot of access to centerfolds that they didn't have before, he went private again in order to save the, the brand. So that's the merger part, and we didn't do that agreement because it was like 50 to 60 pages. Um, so we're gonna stick with just the employment terms. So the um, objective of the party, it was really important for Hugh Hefner to stay and live in the Playboy Mansion as he had already been doing since the 70s. Uh, it, the mansion is a 15 or 16 bedroom mansion in Beverly Hills. And so he was to be employed as the company's founder and editor in chief. And then he maintains control of the editorial part of the magazine. He wanted control over, and it's listed in the terms too, he wanted control over the size of the pages, the, the font, the print, what the, what the models wore. Um, and he, in exchange for that, he would be getting paid a salary. And oh, he, to live into the uh, mansion, it's a condition to the employment, but uh, he would be living there rent, rent free. Basically. Yeah, and the, the terms of the company, what, they're, what they were doing, Icon Merger is pretty much this private investment equity firm. And when, as Vanessa was mentioning, when Playboy started you know, doing that, they pretty much bought Playboy and they said, okay, we're going to use our capital and our resources to help you push the Playboy brand. 
And so when the merger became effective, that is pretty much what the overall performance, which we'll get into a little bit more, that Icon merger is. They own all the right, title, and interest of all the employee developments of Hugh Hefner. <coughs> so all that stuff they are entitled to. And um, the only thing that they can outsource outside of the country or domestically is any non-editorial functions. That's because Hefner really wanted to make sure that he was the only one who had his creative uh, editorial rights. And we think that's partly from him originating from as a journalist and him creating this magazine and wanting to maintain that ultimate control. Because from the looks of the contract, they have control over mostly everything else. So um, here is one of the bunnies. Before um, law school, that was. Before law school. <laughs> Fall 2019 edition. Yeah. Uh, this is the mansion. And then this is one of the clubs um, that I've been to for school purposes. Uh, I was, this is Garrett, I have his permission to use this picture, don't worry. In uh, the summer of 2017, I did an internship in Vietnam, and uh, this was the managing partner, and this was one of our clients. And this lady right here, she owned a very famous, expensive hotel in Vietnam. And underground of it, she had this Playboy Club Lounge. And so that's kind of an example of what Playboy does, is that, you know, they market their brands out to clubs and casinos and lounges, not just magazines and everything, so that they can just embrace the theme. And um, yeah, after we closed the deal between the, uh, them to our client was kind of a event coordinator. So she provided the lighting, the equipment and everything, and they invited us out to the club. And we thought it was kind of weird. I mean, for a Playboy <laughs> club, we didn't think that would really work in the US, especially with what she had in mind. She said that she wanted this Playboy Club to appeal to <coughs> wealthy business owners and like successful people that would come and you know they would talk business with their clients and the bunnies <laughs> would walk around and serve them champagne. I don't know if that would really work in the US. I mean, I know a lot of the clubs that they tried to open here have been shut down um, just because they didn't do too well, but um, apparently in Asia they're a pretty big hit, so yeah. that's that. <laughs> Um, some of the risks that we think the parties considered were uh, taxes. Um, even though you know this is an employment agreement, you know this is still Hugh Hefner's company, and so the way he, he's still an executive member of the company, and so the way he's being compensated is not just like any other regular employee. And so we'll get into the tax statutes a little bit more later, but um, that was one of the risks that they really were worried about. We want to. Hefner wanted to avoid paying as much federal income tax as possible, and the company obviously wants to avoid paying as much tax as possible. So they uh, repeatedly reference in his compensation provision and the salary, and also they have a completely separate provision of some tax statutes. So that was kind of the ways that they tried to cover up for that risk. Um, another thing that was important, as all or most contracts should, is preventing a, a breach. Uh, the company which is the Icon merger, uh, Icon merge. So they were really adamant about Hugh Hefner being the face of the deal. Uh, basically without, his, without Hugh Hefner, because it is a unique and different uh, type of agreement, um, they wouldn't be able to continue operations and outsourcing Playboy Enterprises without Hugh Hefner. So they, they, put, in, they put in some provisions um, that, that maintain what would happen in the event of breaches and um, uh, there's an actual section for rights and remedies and there, it, it explicitly, explicitly states that there's no monetary amount that would be able to um, pay, for, pay them back for any type of breach that Hefner um, would make throughout the agreement. So they have an, uh, a provision for injecting, in, injunctive relief um, uh, for, for specific performance. And then another risk would be for him to maintain his right and control over the Playboy content. And this is um, more so the editorial stuff that we talked about before. Okay, so these are the, um, these are the performances underneath the contract. And it wasn't really structurally um, organized 
it has a, the first section is, uh, it says like employment agreement, and then the second part is standard terms, which there are reps and warranties in and out of the agreement. So essentially, um, Hefner's to make decisions, the editorial uh, decisions, and um, he was also to report to the company's board because he is ex he is the um, the founder and the editor the editor in chief, and then he has to also devote substantially all of his professional energies towards pushing the brand, um, and then he also has to reside in the Playboy Mansion and host parties, social events. I mean, it's a pretty sweet deal on his part, honestly. <laughs> he basically got paid to party. Yeah, and as far as Icon Merger, I think the merger agreement between these two companies would outline their performances and covenants a little bit more, but what I was able to find out from the employment agreement is that they obviously compensate Hefner for his services and you know creating the, the Playboy contents. Um, but they also, because they essentially own Playboy now, they own the, all of Playboy stuff. And so their goal is as an investment company is to try to push you know, this Playboy brand out as much as possible. Think of business ideas, investment strategies in which the, you know, they can find opportunities to really push the Playboy brand market out of there. So that was um, pretty much the extent of the performances of Icon Merger in uh, this employment agreement. Yeah, and it goes beyond just the Playboy magazine. I mean, we're talking Playboy Enterprises manages and operates Playboy.com and also the casinos and clubs and lounges that we um, listed on the, on the second uh, point. Money. Okay, so Hefner is being paid $1 million a year, paid in bi-weekly installments. Um, whatever... Uh, bonuses that the uh, investment company Icon Merger has, you know, Mr. Hefner is eligible to you know, participate in those. Um, and his, his salary is interesting though, because um, as I said before, with the tax purposes, it says that it is, compensation is characterized as guaranteed payments for federal income. Purposes. So they're pretty much trying to say like this is your compensation, but we don't want it to add in any way try to characterize this as compensation as we give to a normal employee. So um, that was one small interesting thing. And uh, the benefits he gets health, life insurance, pension programs, so pretty much standard stuff. And again, for the reimbursement of the business expenses, also those are subject to any way that they could be prevented from the tax code. And one of the best benefits probably is private jet and company car. There you see the Playboy bunny private jet, bunny rabbit right there and all his bunnies. <laughs> okay, so there were, like I said, the agreement isn't very organized, but there is a part of the agreement that states um, the terms for, uh, or the, Yeah, but the, anyways, um, the non, so non-compete, there is a non-compete clause in there that states um, in section 3B that he can, that Hefner cannot engage in any business anywhere in the world in the business without consent of the company. Um, and they, you know, they stated it underneath this section that this covenant is material inducement to the company's entering into the employment agreement, which was huge because out of, all of the ones listed, that one was, you know, they stated it in that section, they also stated it on the next page. Um, and then uh, the non-solicitation of employees in section 3C of the standard terms, um, the, he's gonna be privileged to confidential information and he's also gonna meet employees of the Icon Merge sub and there's also a confidential um, provision that reiterates the non-solicitation of employees, which means that if he leaves Playboy Enterprises, that he cannot take any of the employees or any information that he learned while being employed under this agreement with him to um, kind of bring them with him on whatever new ventures that he that may come about. 
And as far as copyright, I think because they have a licensing agreement, it's probably more outlined in detail over there. And <coughs> the employment agreement, it, again, it's, it's very limited to what information they say, but uh, pretty much there's a small reference to copyrights because this company is now owning uh, Hugh Hefner's, all his developments, inventions, and ideas, and, and everything that he invents Playboy-wise, now this company is gonna own. So there was a small reference to copyright there. Um, and the main thing that I mentioned earlier was the, the tax, and uh, pretty much there was this really huge provision in this agreement that talks about um, one of the internal revenue codes that's the specific characterization for when an executive is being compensated, and there is a uh, potential penalty of a 20% excise tax on those compensations paid. And so both parties were very concerned. They're like, if we are in any way getting close to violating this statute or having to pay any of these taxes or any of these penalties, we want to take all measures to try to um, not let that happen. And so both of the, there's both covenants and reps and warranties on both sides saying we are going to do our best to not violate any of this tax code. And what's really important uh, regarding the tax provisions um, weaved into the agreement is that it's for both parties because there is a reimbursement provision, so any any um, cost that they reimburse Hefner with, they also would be taxed on. So that provision in itself is kind of just like covering covering their butts for both sides. Um, so there are four possible ways uh, for the contract to be terminated. There's death, termination for cause by company, termination for good reason, and disability. Um, death, that's pretty self-explanatory that's happening right now. Um, Mr. Hafner passed away in September of 2017. Um, the termination for caused by the company um, it has a lot of those material qualifiers that we learned about, I found. And um, as Vanessa will talk about the good reason by Hafner, you notice that they're very different. Um, so termination for caused by the company, there's pretty much two definitions for cause. It's either if Mr. Hafner commits a felony conviction but that felony convention has to damage the reputation of the business. And second, any breach, it has to be a willful and gross breach of substantial material obligation, which approximately substantially damages the company and which cannot be remedied within 30 days. But even if he didn't remedy it within 30 days, if he still took reasonable steps to remedy it, then there's no breach. So, it seems like the company, because as Vanessa mentioned earlier, Hefner is the face of Playboy and they really can't find you know, someone else different than him, then they were really trying to make it like, all right, well, we really don't want to terminate you that easy. It has to be something really, really bad. Obviously, that's good for Hefner. Whether that was such a good move on the company, we don't know. But, uh... um, and also, under the termination for cause, he's the executive who ha who's Hefner, he's still uh, eligible to live in the mansion, um, even if he's terminated. The only thing is he would have to pay a monthly market rent, but the lease agreement that's attached to this agreement, it um, defines market rent as a fair market rent, the time of the agreement, and they list it as $100 a month. So um, the thing about all, of, all four of these, and I'll go over the three and four specifically, is that one through three triggers one of the provisions, which is an accrued obligation um, subsection. And with it, what it says is if any of these occur, one, two, or three, that, um, you know, Hugh Hefner or in the event of death, it would be his, um, a third party, it would be his estate, um, then they are entitled to whatever is owed from um, if he dies in the middle of the month, whatever's owed for the rest of that term, which would be the end of the year, is going to get paid to him. Um, interestingly, is the termination for good reason that um, is controlled by Hugh Hefner, and essentially it just states in that the company, if the company materially breaches the contract, then Hugh Hefner will be able to terminate for good reason. It doesn't specify what a material breach would be, but it does give him the right to continue his base salary um, 
guaranteed $5 million because the term of this employment agreement, the initial term is five years, and then it's automatically renewed. So regardless of when the contract would be terminated for this reason, he would still get $5 million. And then disability, um, if Hugh Hefner became, um, you know, if he had physical or mental illness that made him have like inca incapacity to make decisions or be able to work as the uh, editor in chief, then they would have to, the company would have to provide reasonable accommodations. Um, and if they, it was reasonable accommodations, but not to the extent that they would cause undue hardship to the company. So basically they would take care of him so that way he would still maintain, you know, Hugh Hefner as the face of the brand, but also um, not doing too much or, or extending too many costs to, to take care of him. Okay, weakness in the contract, aside from like we stated before, with everything kind of being everywhere and us having to go through and pinpoint the reps and warranties, in section one of the employment agreement, A through, D, it's A through D, these are decisions that Hugh Hefner uh, is supposed to make, and they, they remedy it right below it. There's a provision that states if he's not able to make it, then um, due to incapacity or disability, then the CIC director, who's listed in Appendix 1, may make decisions on his behalf. And then on the last, the very, very last page, it is Appendix 1, and it has um, it has the person's name. It's just not very specific. It's not, there isn't really a, a deadline uh, or like a time frame on it. So I think that that should have been a little bit um, more clear. And I also think that throughout the agreement, because they referenced the merger agreement and the um, the licensing agreement, it it's just doesn't stand well alone. So it creates a lot of ambiguity. There aren't a, there isn't a section for defined terms here because you have to reference the merger agreement. So I think that they should have even, you know, went over the defined terms or just put it all together um, to make it clearer. And as far as icon mergers, some of the weaknesses I saw was, uh, as I mentioned, that just the, there's no material qualifiers and good reason for terminating Hefner. And, and that makes sense. I mean, they want him the most they can. I mean, they don't want to fire him ideally, but I, I still think just to, I mean, cover yourself as a company, they still should have put some material qualifiers in which Hefner would be able, not be able to leave so easily. Because it seems like under the termination for good reason, as long as Hefner is able to find some small material breach, however that is defined, he can leave the company. And so I, I think they should have added more qualifiers to that. And I also think they could have added a little bit more under termination. I mean, it's possible they added something in the merger as well. Uh, I'm sorry, as uh, termination for death. Um, just because, I mean, this was, the agreement was in 2011. I mean, Hefner was probably like, I don't know, maybe in his like uh, upper 70s. But he's still getting an old guy. And I mean, there's a lot of energy that's been drained out of him. So. I think they might have, should have considered, in his 80s even, yeah, so he was, he was getting pretty old, so I think maybe the company should have considered, like, okay, what's going to happen after he dies? I mean, after all, like, he is the face of the company, as I, I'm going to mention, the mansion's gonna, not going to be with Hefner anymore. The mansion's a big part of Playboy, so how would the company try to compensate for that, you know, without the face of Hugh Hefner, without the mansion anymore? What would the company do? Is there anything with the kids who's gonna take over? Like I said, that's probably mentioned somewhere in the merger, or maybe even in the licensing agreement, but I just thought it should have been a little bit more clear even in this employment agreement as well. All right, so there, litigation and other problems. There are, there are, a new, there are numerous copyright uh, lawsuits um, in and out of you know, in and out of court that settled. Um, but I wasn't able to get a lot of the information for those. Um, furthermore, they mostly deal with copyright of the Playboy Bunny. The only contract lawsuit that I found was the Stephen Marchioni versus Steve Clayton and Playboy Enterprises. And basically in 2006, Stephen Marchioni um, designed these guitars, electric and acoustic guitars, 
and he had a separate agreement with Steve Clayton that he would receive 3% of the net sales um, for all the guitars um, sold. And that contract didn't have an end date or anything like that. So to him, it just kept going on and on. And he named Playboy Enterprises in the lawsuit. And the only document that was, that I could view on Bloomberg was the actual complaint that named uh, Playboy Enterprises Incorporated, but you could see from the uh, from the docket that Playboy Enterprises and Hugh Hefner attempted to get out of the lawsuit. Um, you know, and, and every, every single motion to dismiss that they filed was denied, and so they did come to a terms of agreement in 2014, but that's not disclosed either. Um, as far as the mansion. Um, so in 2016, Mr. Hefner and this guy named Darren Metropolis, he's this Greek investor who, I think he's the CEO of Pabst Blue Ribbon. I don't know if you guys know about beer, but. And Hostess. Um, and Hostess <laughs> Twinkies. Um, so he, and he bought the mansion next to the Playboy Mansion many years back, and then in 2016, he entered into an agreement with Mr. Hefner to sell him the Playboy Mansion for $100 million, um, effective upon Mr. Hefner's death and on the condition that Mr. Hefner would stay in there. Um, there's been word that this Darren Metropolis guy is also a big partier and knows a lot of celebrities and stuff like that and that he may try to continue this Playboy legacy of having these extravagant parties in Beverly Hills and whatnot, but we're not really sure. So. And it was originally, the mansion was originally listed for $200 million, but he's, he took $100 million. The rest of his life, which ultimately was only a year later. Yeah. So that's that. Any questions? We don't have any Playboy magazines, but couldn't bring them. <laughs> I told him to bring some for Adams.